Hello there and welcome. This is Mikhail or Michael speaking. As always, I salute to those who decided to support me financially, be it through Patreon, PayPal or Super Thanks. Thank you and have a good day. I will start today's video with so-called Vremivka tactical bridgehead and as I speak, Russians have launched massive counter-offensive operation in this sector with their general vector of attack towards Velika Novosilka in attempt to recapture recently lost settlements. Russians did lose some settlements in the last 24 hours. Mostly it is being explained by the deteriorating of the weather conditions. Due to that factor, Russians were unable to use their aviation and drones effectively. As I speak, this counter-offensive operation is happening. It is being reported both by pro-Russian and pro-Ukrainian sources. If the situation will change, I will post a new video immediately. So don't forget to ring that notification bell and wait for that video to come out. Again, if this counter-offensive operation will be successful. But as this offensive is happening, let's quickly assess the situation and what happened in the last 24 hours. Let's stay here in the Vremivka tactical bridgehead and assess the situation. As a result of a successful Ukrainian attack, Russians lost control over Starozhova and Blagodatne. It has also been reported that Russians left settlement of Makar it is unclear whether Ukrainians have full control over this settlement or this settlement is in the gray zone. Again, Russians still control the tactical heights right in front of those three settlements and having full fire control over them. The reason of this successful attack, like I said at the beginning of the video, was a deteriorating weather which did not allow Russian aviation to effectively stop Ukrainian offensive. And as a result of that, they have successfully advanced on this flank as well as on this flank and forced Russians to retreat first from the tactical heights and then from the settlements of Storozhove, Blagodatne and Makarovka because once again they are located in the lowland and defending them would be suicidal. Now, as you can see, mostly Ukrainians are having success advancing here, where there are no heights in front of them, while here on the heights themselves, Ukrainian success is more limited. About two days ago, Russians launched a successful counter-attack from Rovnipol and were able to capture this much territory from the Ukrainian forces. In a way, it provided them with a better defensive positions along this river. However, with Ukrainians launching their successful counter-attack here in this sector, capturing Novodarivka, Russians could be forced to retreat further back. Ukrainians are continuously harassing Russian positions here. This front as of right now holds. But once again, we can see a bridgehead developing within the bridgehead itself. This could be very dangerous for the Russians as Ukrainians can strike towards Rivnopol and encircle Russian positions. Now at the start of the video, I said that Russians launched a counter-attack operation here. And this, I'm sure, is in part to save these positions here, as well as in attempt to regain recently lost settlements. So we can see that Russians are reacting swiftly and in timely manner. Let's touch on the situation near Staromayorsky and Urajaina settlement. It has been reported that after pushing Russians out of Makarivka, Ukrainians resumed their attack across the open fields in the direction of Urajaina and Staromayorsky. Some reports suggest that Ukrainians had already reached Urajaina and started fighting for it. Some reports suggest that they were only able to reach the first line of defense around it. And the fighting is happening in the open fields in front of the settlement. If we zoom in and turn on the topography map, we can see that Urajaina is not located on the great positions. Of course, Russians are still controlling the tactical heights in this sector, which helps them having full fire control over this sector. So I would assume if Ukrainians want to continue advancing here, taking those settlements, they first need to storm and kick out Russians out of this tactical height. Plus, if we zoom in, we can see that Urajaina is located to the other side of Mokri Yali, which is an inconvenience for the Russians. There is a bridge that is leading to the settlement. I would assume that if the situation would become difficult, Russians will surely retreat and blow up the bridge. From Vremevka tactical bridgehead, let's quickly go to the Arikha front line. Again, the weather had deteriorated here significantly, which did not stop Ukrainians at attempting to break through the Russian lines and reach Rabotina. As of right now, there are no successes reported. And the way I know it is 
interesting. If you know the deep state map, usually they are very slow at reporting Russian gains, but as soon as Ukrainians made any tiny little advance, they reported immediately. So they've made a whole bunch of updates showing us the Ukrainian liberation of these settlements. So I would assume if there were any successes in the Arikhe front, we would surely see it. But as you can see, there are no changes whatsoever. No changes has also been reported by the Russian side. However, I have a video of another Ukrainian column being destroyed by the Russian artillery. Situation in Lopkova remains interesting as well. It is being reported that Ukrainians tried to penetrate Russian lines and attack in the direction of the settlement of Lugova. However, they were immediately counter-attacked by the Russians and driven back to their initial positions. The settlement of Lopkova itself still remains in the grey zone. Ukrainians did not claim control over this settlement. There is again a lot of back and forth happening with Ukrainians attacking and Russians counter-attacking. So whatever gains Ukrainians are able to make in this sector, Russians immediately counter-attack and retake the those positions. From this sector, let's quickly touch on the situation all across the front line. Now, there were reports of a limited counter-offensive operations here from Gulai Polya in the direction of Balogi. Ukrainians did not use extensive amount of force here, so this attack was quickly repelled by the Russians. Then we have situation in the Avdeevka where Ukrainians have been unsuccessfully attempting to attack Russians all across the front line. All in all, Russians did not lose any positions here in this front as of right now. Then, as always, we visit Bakhmut or Artyomovsk. Here, Ukrainians also tried to attack in the direction of Kurdyumovka. Again, interesting situation developed here near Birhivka. If you remember, Ukrainians were attacking in its direction. It is now being reported that Russians counter-attacked and were able to regain about this much territory, getting control over the choke point that is located here. Ukrainians relaunched their attacks once again, this time attacking towards Yagodne and Birhivka. There are videos that suggest huge amounts of losses by Ukrainian forces and no territorial gains. With this, I end today's video. I hope it was to your liking. If it is, please consider supporting it with a like, comment and a subscription. Also, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you in advance. As always, humanity calls me to condemn all violence against human beings. Have a good day and always remember, Russia will be free and great.